Hey everybody, welcome to our Greensfield 2015. Uh, we are not quite finished here yet, but when we're finished it's going to be roughly 50 acres of kale, collards, turnip and mustard green. And uh, we're really happy with the way it's looking. Um, it's relatively a flat field compared with last year, so that's exciting. You can't always get something that's nice and flat. Sometimes you have to put up with some hills or some wet areas or some rocky areas or what have you. But this is looking pretty good. So I wanted to do a quick video here now that we've got got it mostly done, and uh, we still see a little bit of a little bit of planting going on. So it's fun to see that too. But um, you can see here, this is this is kale, still looking pretty small. So as uh, subsequent videos. Are, are put up here once we get going it'd be neat to see how how quickly this stuff responds once it gets established but you can see we've got uh, four rows on this uh, fairly wide piece of plastic and under those rows are let's look in over here you can barely see this some people know this already and those of you that don't it's kind of interesting just to to know what goes into this sort of stuff but you can see this this is irrigation tape or tape or trickle tape it's got little slices in it every eight inches, I believe, um, which will just let little driplets of water come out when you put the water through it. And so it puts a very slow, very gentle emission of water into that uh, subsoil, or not the subsoil, just in under the plastic. And it, just a very efficient use of water. So basically there's no water loss from evaporation, there's no water loss from from runoff and uh, just conserves water a lot more so in that way it's a little more environmentally friendly um, but it's just very uh, very convenient once you get once you get everything hooked up you can really uh, do a lot of things with that we can fertilize with that too so we put fertilizer right directly to the root zone if there's a change that happens in the plant that it's becoming deficient in some kind of a of a micronutrient, we can add that in too fairly quickly. So that is uh, that's a good thing. But as you can imagine, it takes a lot of work to get it set up. So basically, what's happen happening here is you can see way off in the distance there. I'm not sure if you can see that. We've got a kind of a pump station off there. There's a fairly large pond that gets um, gets water into these uh, aluminum pipes or the six-inch aluminum pipes, and then they in turn send water to what we call these header hoses. So you see, you can see a, a little bit of a hose and that is a four inch kind of a flexible hose going perpendicular to these lines and they will then go to um, we call an oval hose which is just just back here a little ways and that then gets connected to those little drip lines that we we're, uh, we're showing you earlier. So the aluminum pipe gets filled, then it fills these these hoses that are lay flats, which basically carry water out to these zones. The zone is about three acres. This is about 13 acres, this section we're standing in, and we have to water it in three, three or four acre increments just to because of the pressure, um, our limitations on pressure. So you can see here, there's a good example there. There's a green hose just right there, the lay flat, and uh, then that gets elbowed into a short little piece of oval hose that is what we call a header, and then one right here. So then you can see it hooks in. You put a little hole in it, and uh, it hooks into these these trickle tapes. So basically, the whole this whole unit gets filled up with water, and then it builds up back pressure like resistance, and then when roughly seven pounds of pressure on each of these little trickle tape lines um, that when that's achieved then they start emitting their little drips of water and uh, you could pull the plastic up and it looks like a little wet blob on the under the uh, on the soil surface but when you put your hand in it it's nice and nice and damp and you can see it's just a really efficient use of the water it gives the root zone a real good soaking so that um, I guess that's one of the major components of what's called plastic culture and so that's what we're doing here. The other reason we use the plastic mulch is it uh, really detracts from the weeds, keeps the weeds in control. With uh, a crop like kale or collards, uh, weeds are a bit of a problem. Weeds attract insects and uh, insects will make uh, 
uh, unfavorable marks on the leaves, sort of. So, so we really want to discourage that. And the the black plastic mulch really keeps the uh, the soil temperature at a little bit of a of a warmer state than it would be without the plastic mulch. So, it's uh, it's it's been working well. We've really increased our yields with this particular crop with the black plastic. So, stay tuned for some more shots of this beautiful crop growing. <laughs>